You know, if you ask me, the absolute worst thing about cryptocurrency is the fact that people can make money off of it, okay? Most of the people in Bitcoin, in other cryptocurrencies, they're thinking about one thing, they're thinking about gains, they're thinking about, uh, I don't know, having these thick returns, they're thinking about being rich, they're thinking about Lambos, blah, blah, blah. And that annoys me to no end, not just because you have a bunch of people in the sphere who care, I, I, I mean, it's nothing, Caring about money is not wrong, okay? That's not what I'm saying. But there are so many people who will prioritize that over everything else, and they seem to be burdened with the assumption that that is what Bitcoin exists for. Like, the Bitcoin white paper was like a get-rich-quick scheme or something like that, which it wasn't. I mean, there was no, there's obviously nothing about that in the core workings of Bitcoin. It is a happy accident. It is an epiphenomenon that uh, Bitcoin ends up uh, producing returns. I mean, that that is inevitable with digital scarcity. If someone had sat down and thought it through, they probably would have realized that would have happened. Uh, but that is not the reason it exists, okay? So, I will go ahead and say, whenever I do a video, uh, this goes without saying, whenever I do a video on Bitcoin on my channel, I will have the same people every time say, oh, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, that's a scam, dude. Stop doing videos on that. Because they are they are resting on that assumption as well, that it's about money or something like that. When in reality, on this, you know, frankly, on my channel, let's be real, I do a lot of technology videos uh, on self-hosting things. Let's say having your own website, having your own email server, your own social media sites, uh, hosting them your own, uh, hosting your own chats, like all these kind of things that you can do yourself that exist out there, but you can host yourself. Like it, it's it's... Uh, technology in your control. That technology is out there, right? It works. It works pretty well. I mean, some of it is still under development, but I mean, what do you think everyone else is doing, right? Google is hosting their own. Um, either way, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, that is exactly the monetary equivalent, okay? That Bitcoin is, is just free and open source money. That's it. In fact, there is no other way to have self-hosted money aside from using blockchain technology right now. That is what proof of work developed, this idea, you know, before proof of work, before Bitcoin, right? You, there was no way of having a decentralized consensus, okay? Proof of work is a decent, decentralized consensus. So for example, uh, you would just have to trust some party to tell you which transactions are legitimate or not. Uh, you know, proof of work changed that. You can now have free and open source money. That is what the blockchain is. Uh, that is what, uh, that's what Bitcoin is. That, that is the purpose of it, okay? Uh, and I think a lot of people, they get twisted and a lot of people are actually afraid to invest because they think investing is about making money. When it's really about having a share of this free and open source uh, a monetary system, that, that's what it's about. And since we have every reason to think it's going to get bigger and bigger because this is, th there is a massive need for this in the world, that is why the price is going up. Um, that, you know, that is why it's going to be, you know, it's going to go up, it's going to go down, but in general, it is something the world needs more of. Uh, so uh, it, it'll solve a lot of problems the bigger it is. Okay, so th that is one of the big issues I have, like this obsession. I, I mean, I understand it. Like, I'm not mad at moon boys. I'm not mad at people who talk about the price all the time, but that's not the reason Bitcoin exists. And, um, you know, a lot of people, myself included, right? I knew about Bitcoin uh, back in 2011 when, like, Max Kaiser was going on about it on RT, like, around, like, w Occupy Wall Street. I knew about it back then, but I was actually afraid to get it because I thought it was like, it, it was like uh, the stock market. It was like, oh, this is about making money or something like that. Um, you, there's kind of, you, like, you feel like you're getting into a rat race. And I'll just tell you, it's not like that. Don't think about it. Just... just uh, if, if you're thinking about getting Bitcoin or Monero or something like that, don't really think about the price. Just say, this is a way for me to transact peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, now, let me give you some examples as, as to why this is so valuable. Because frankly, the reason the financial system is so expensive nowadays is because it is bloated. It, is, it has all of these extremely inefficient things that would not exist uh, there would be no need. I mean, frankly, there are no need for banks. In, uh, I mean, of course, there are need for banks, you know, in our the way we do do currency now. But, you know, in Bitcoin or uh, in cryptocurrency, it is easy for you to store your money securely. You just have a seed freeze, seed phrase. You can put it in a safety deposit box or like different words and different safety deposit boxes. You can keep them secure, right? 
Um, you do not need like a bank with guards and locks and stuff like that um, to hoard all of your many pounds of gold, right? That, you know, that is one of the advantages of it. Um, and because it is a current, it's a hard currency, you don't really have to worry about inflation. In fact, inflation is sort of good for you. Um, I mean, debatably, but you know, if fiat inflates, you know, Bitcoin is going to go up in terms of fiat, goes without saying. Um, now in the short term, that's actually debatable because people might be scared and they might want more fiat because blah, blah, blah. But I mean, you understand what I mean. Like long term, it's a, it's a generally good thing. Um, but he, here are some examples of inefficiencies of, of the financial system as it is. So let's say, um, let's say you want to give your friend money over the internet, okay? Let's say, or uh, you have a favorite content creator or something stupid like that. Actually, on that, uh, for the longest time, I've accepted donations via PayPal and, and stuff like that. And I'm honestly, I, I feel like that is sort of against my principles. So I don't know, maybe sometime next year, I'll just say crypto only. Maybe that's going to be my new thing, but... Um, Either way, let's say you want to send someone money. Let's say 20 bucks. Let's say your bud. Uh, so you want to send your bud $20. Now, a lot of people will use something like PayPal or Venmo for that. I mean, Venmo is basically just something on top of PayPal. Uh, but if you want to send them money on Venmo, uh, that, that, of course, is linked into PayPal. And, of course, both of you have to have a bank. You trust your money with that bank. They're in control of it. They can say, no, we don't want to do this transaction, or yes, we do. Okay, so you have two banks, you have PayPal between, you have Venmo between, and actually, uh, in a lot of cases, you will be using a credit or debit card, which will be based on MasterCard or Visa or Amex or whatever. So instead of just sending it to him, you are, I mean, your transaction is going through your bank, Visa or MasterCard, uh, PayPal, Venmo, uh, then his PayPal, uh, then, you know, the, the bank over there and his Visa or my, MasterCard. How are, the, like, there's so many intermediary parties between this. And a lot of them are taking a cut. You know, PayPal is going to take a cut. Uh, Visa and MasterCard, you don't see them take a cut, but they do take a cut. Um, uh, that, that's always how it is when you buy, buy something on a credit card. Your credit card processor is actually taking a little bit of that money. And it would be a lot easier if you could just, if there were some way of just sending twenty dollars to someone without that. And that's what crypto is, right? The only thing in cryptocurrency you have to worry about is the transaction fees, which in Bitcoin right now are pretty big. But again, there's technology built on top of Bitcoin, like the Lightning Network, that alleviates that. And also, you know, things like Monero, which are better for privacy anyway. Uh, you know, transaction fees are like you know half a cent, something like that. They're really negligible. Um, either way, that, that is the efficiency you're getting. Like you're no longer relying on all these different parties. And of course, all these different parties will just change the deal all the time. They're always adding on more things. Your banks might decide, oh, well, we're going to have a monthly minimum for your you know, bank account now. Uh, you know, PayPal now just lets the ADL monitor and censor their transactions because why not? Like th there are all these crazy things happening because you are trusting even one party. Uh, but in the case in using PayPal, you're trusting like seven, eight, nine parties, and of course they're all giving your information to third parties as well. It's just a freaking mess. Okay, it's just a mess. Um, cryptocurrency just does it better. Um, it it is something that you are in control of. You, you do not have to rely on anyone else uh, other than the fact that you know Bitcoin mining is going on. Like the, there is a network out there, right? Um, you can send money to someone without worrying about anything. Just the other week, in fact. Uh, well, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna talk about the annoying things about the financial system because it, I don't know a lot of people don't uh, Maybe you haven't experienced this in your life, but I just want to say how annoying it is So the other week when I did a video on the website, I started lindypress.net where I reprint out-of-print books um, Everything was going great. The site works fine works perfectly, but I noticed that some um, When on my side when I was paying like the costs for printing and shipping and stuff like that Which should be done automatically there were some things not going through well after calling a whole bunch of Indians and robots uh, I realized that what was happening is one of the credit cards I was using as a business credit card had a maximum of 20 transactions a day. Okay, so I could only take 20 orders on that, or at least pay for 20 orders. So I had to figure all that out. Now it doesn't. Everyone, your your books are coming. Don't worry about that. But. Um, you know, I, on my side, I had to worry about, I had to put all these things on other credit cards and figure this out and, you know, call again, call a bunch of robots and Indians. Um, and it was just such a pain. Like that is the thing you, it, when you are trusting another party, 
uh, to do your financial stuff. That is something you have to worry about. And all of them, they have their own policies that are not all listed in the contract that you sign. Even if anyone read that, like, that was a good example. I actually looked for that in the, the contract I signed. And there was nothing about a 20 uh, transaction a day limit. Um, but that is the things you have to deal with. And all of them, of course, since they are custodians of your money, they are going to have to do anti-money laundering law, you know, comply with all these laws and stuff like that. Um, and that is one of the annoying things, you know, that's one of the stupid things about people who use custodial cryptocurrency wallets, because you're just, you're just setting yourself up to recreate the existing financial system. If you, if you do not have a cryptocurrency in a private wallet, in a, a wallet that you control with private keys and no one else has those private keys uh, or seed, uh, you don't have it. Like you're, you're just, I don't know, you just have IOUs for Bitcoin, which could be worth nothing. Um, and I've said before, you know, there are other things as well. Just being able to send, you know, I, I, I think I mentioned when I talked about like buying a car or something like that. Uh, I bought a random used car from someone. Um, and of course, if I want to buy, if like he doesn't trust me, he just met me. Um, so we have to do this thing where I leave him a check. He makes sure that it gets deposited in a couple days that I'm not like ripping him off. I'm not, you know, going to have a, a check that's going to bounce or something. So I have to wait a couple days for that to the process. Then we come back and do it. Now with cryptocurrency, you didn't have to, you won't have to deal with that at all because, oh, well, he sent me this money. I see the transaction right now that it's legitimate, even if it hasn't been approved, right? Uh, it's in the mempool or something. Uh, I can see that it's a legitimate transaction. Um, so anyway, th those are the, the kind of things. So in the movement to, uh, you know, Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies as a kind of global financial uh, system, which I, I do think is gradually going to happen. I don't know exactly what it's going to look like, but there are so many efficiencies that we will gain because people finally have the right to actually script their own money. They will have the right, like... Money is now free and open source technology. That is the point. That's the point of Bitcoin. That's the reason that it exists. Okay. It has nothing to do with making money. If you make money, that's great. Um, but I will go ahead and tell you, like, and I will say, if you're one of those people, right? If you're one of those people who, who like, uh, who was like me and you felt antsy about it because you feel like it's a, like it's about making gains, just relax don't worry. Hey, if you buy a thousand dollars in Bitcoin, there's a good chance it's going to go down to seven hundred dollars, you know, in the next week. Because that's always, I mean, that it's it's a roller coaster ride. Um, but uh, you know, a lot of people, frankly, there are a bunch of no no coiners who are governed by this psychology of, ooh, I want to I want to hate Bitcoin. I want to dislike it because I know if I if I decide to like it, I would be proving myself in the past wrong for not having bought it. If that makes sense. So a lot of people are like, oh, I didn't buy it, therefore I have to knock it down. Um, but I just want to say it's not about money. It really just is not. Money is a nice, it's, it's, it's a sweetener, can make a difference in your life. But the reason it is out there, I mean, the reason this technology is out there is to make things more in individual people's control, uh, make them more private, more decentralized, more peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, and just deal with a less frustrating financial system that everyone can trust because no trust is required. Okay, that is it.